Hebrews 6. God is, in a way, absolutely desperate to persuade us that he will save us. Right? Why did Jesus die? Could God have saved us without giving us his son to die on a cross? Sure, he could have done what he wanted. He could save man any which way he desired. But God commended his love to us, Paul says, in that Christ died for our sins. He commended his love to us through the cross, through giving his son to die for us. It was as if the death of God's son was to desperately persuade us that his love is real. In Hebrews 6, we have more examples of this kind of thing. We're told that God promised to save us and his word should be enough because God is not a liar. His word is true. But as if that wasn't enough, he confirmed his word of promise about our salvation. He, he confirmed it by swearing an oath. Therefore, God, we read, determined to show more abundantly to the heirs of the promise, that's us, the immutability, the unchangeability of his purpose, confirmed it with an oath, so that by two, by two immutable things, that's the word of promise and the oath, things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we may have a strong encouragement who have fled for refuge to lay hold on the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. God will not lie. He wants to save us. He is a saviour God. This is what Jesus means as a word, the salvation of God, Yehoshua. And so we should have an absolutely certain hope, not a hope for the best, not a hope in the sense of a vague possibility we hope might come true. No, but an absolutely definite conviction that I shall be saved. And this is an anchor of our soul, Paul says. In all the storms of life, despite the way that life changes and shifts like waves on the water, we have an anchor. We have stability. I will be saved by his grace. God has promised it. And it will come true.